This video explains how to draw a ggplot2 histogram with an overlaid density with count values on the y-axis. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example, and this example is based on the data frame that we can create with lines 2 and 3 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing, which is called data. And we can click on this data object to open a new window which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains only one column which is called x. And this column contains random numeric values. Now, if we want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package. As you can see in lines 5 and 6 of the code, I have installed the package already. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 6 of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package, such as ggplot, geom histogram, and geom density, as you can see in lines 8 to 10 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, a ggplot2 histogram with overlaid density is appearing at the bottom right. However, you can also see that the density is much lower than the histogram. So if we want to draw a histogram with overlaid density with count values on the y-axis. Then we first need to specify the bin width that we want to use for our histogram. And we can do that as you can see in line 12 of the code. So in this case, I'm specifying a bin width of 0.2. So after running this line of code, a new data object called my bin width is appearing at the top right. And now we can use this data object to specify the bin width within the geom histogram function and within the geom density function. So if you run lines 14 to 16 of the code, you can see at the bottom right of RStudio that our plot is updated. And this time the density is fitting on the histogram. And you can see that the y-axis is showing the count values of our data. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video, so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.